Hey, Frank. Hello, Amanda. We are going to keep going on our, our brand. Yeah, our, our build, brand building TV series. It's not really a TV series, but season one, we'll episode be, three. We'll be one day. We can dream, right? The real tactics of building a brand. Yeah. Um, but today we're going to talk about growth goals. And I think that's, oh, you have so many smart things that we're going to, that you've thought through that we get to talk about today. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, but even before we dive into that, could you just like kind of help share like where we, how we got to this point in the conversation? Yeah, totally. So uh, like you had just mentioned, we, we thought we'd do a series, a little bit more of a sequential series on um, basically like the essentials of building a brand, right? What are the, what are the core elements and tenets of building a brand? And so before this, this is our third video in that series. And before this, we talked about purpose and vision. So a little summary of that. It's just what is your, like, why do you exist beyond money as a company, right? Obviously, uh, we exist to make money as a company, but why do you exist beyond that? What's your purpose and your vision beyond mm -hmm. that? And then the second was brand identity. And that just defines who you want to be aspirationally. Who do you want your brand to be? What do you want to be known for aspirationally in the future? And so that brings us to today. So those are the first two, right? You work through your purpose and vision. That's the highest level. You work through your brand identity. That's, that's, who you are, right? What you want to be known for in the future aspirationally. And now we are on setting growth goals and that can pertain to a lot of different things, but it's important for a variety of reasons. So I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, it's certainly the point where we start all the time and I think is, is absolutely critical. So this is, um, this is certainly one of my favorite things to talk about and I'm excited to dive in. I love talking about goals too. And I think part of it is, is that as an organization and as individuals are really goal driven. Um, but I, I, like talking about this particularly in respects to growing a brand because we talk about so much like identify the gap like where are you as a brand where do you need to get to and we've spent a lot of time talking about like your brand identity and your brand vision and like i th i think that creating goals is just like that first like understanding of these are the things that i need to accomplish in order to hit my vision and in order to reach the my aspirational brand identity and so they're just super important and um should be really inspirational to talk about and think about so and i know we'll talk yeah. we'll kind of touch on that today but yeah yeah absolutely so i'm excited to dive in well let's dive in with the first question which is probably the most obvious why is it important to talk about and have growth goals yeah well you said it a couple uh you know lines ago is the first and, and foremost thing i would say is to know what you're solving for um so like we said, we talk about purpose and vision and those things are really fun. It's like, it's the dreaming part of doing it, but really the art of, of growing a brand comes from the doing. And mm -hmm. in order to know what to do, you really have to know what you're solving for. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, even brand, brand strategy, we can define that really quick, which would be helpful. Brand strategy is the thing that bridges the gap between where you are now and where you want to be, like what your future state or desired future state is. We talked about that in the last video. But to build that bridge, you need to know what you're building for. How how long is the gap? What you know? Where is it? How are you defining the gap that exists? Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, I would say is to identify what you're solving for. Um, and I think too many projects, and I, I learned this the hard way years ago. I think too many projects started with an assumption of what needs to be done. Um, but you really always need to start with a diagnosis of some sort. Like, where are we coming in at? What do we actually need to solve for? Did we make assumptions before we knew what the problem was or what the gap was at least? Um, I don't know. I, I know I have one more item, but do you have anything to add to that? I really, well, yes, I love everything that you said. And to add to that, I think like even we as an organization, we follow a process where we identify what our goals are specifically for a quarter or for a year. Yeah. And that's what we work on. And we don't get distracted from them. Sometimes shiny new things come up yeah. and it, it, we might say, okay, well, this is really important. So we need to shift our strategy or we need to spend some effort on that. But like for the most part, we stick to our goals and like, that's what we do. That's what we go after. Um, and I, I really liked how you called that out. Like know what you're solving for. Don't get distracted. Just like dig into that and, and stay focused. Yeah. And to that point, like my, I think the second thing overall, so yes, know what you're solving for is to have objective criteria that you, you can measure against. Right. Um, it's really easy and fun to create a lot of movement and, you know, you, you could perceive that you're making progress, but like you said, at the end of the year, you're going to look back and say, like, did we actually achieve anything? But setting, right. again, very, very clear 
goals based on your actual, excuse me, aspirations um, and having objective criteria to measure success against. Um, one, it helps you set that direction. What direction mm -hmm. are we going? And we actually have measurable things to get there. And then second, um, it is your measuring stick to a certain mm -hmm. extent at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year. Have you been moved? Has, has that movement been creating the outcomes that you want? Certainly. Yeah, I love that. So true. Um, I guess kind of rolling right along, how would you define growth goals? And maybe if you wouldn't mind sharing some examples. Yeah. This is, I think this has been interesting over the last couple of years and certainly a learning experience for me. Um, in, in my past experiences and even, even early within our own teams, I'll be super transparent. It's like, hey, we, we need to accomplish this. And it's kind of like, okay, go out and accomplish it. Just go out and, and do it, do the thing, right? Um, and the goal could even be somewhat clear. And mm -hmm. the hard thing about that is like, but what do we do to accomplish it? Like that's our strategy. Mm -hmm. And we know we have an end goal, but we actually haven't figured out like, okay, what are the kind of micro goals or things we have to hit to achieve it? And so how I would define um, good growth goals, at least categorically, is one, the end goal. So what mm -hmm. is really the end outcome you need? Two, why it's a goal. So what yeah. is that allowing you to do if you accomplish it? And three, the objectives within that goal based on the problem you need to solve. So we can walk through an example of that. So again, end goal, why it's a goal and the objectives within it. So if the end goal, for example, is, um, is to increase margin within the next year on your products or services, whatever your offerings are, you want to increase margins within the next year. Why you want to do that might be because you want to get acquired by you know, another company in your, in your industry, whatever it is, you want evaluation, whatever that might be. Um, that's your why. You need to have a healthier PL um, and show better shareholder value. Okay, so end goal, increase margin. Why? Because you want to get acquired. And that's, that's kind of part of that um, showcase. But there's one piece I noticed that like in our experience has always been missing traditionally. And then once we figured out how to change that has been tremendously impactful. And that's this third piece, objective, objective goals within that uh, broader goal. So in this case, you want to increase margin. The why is because you want to get acquired. Well, in order to do that, in order to increase margin from a brand perspective, uh, you need to probably charge more, increase your prices, or you need to decrease costs. Scott Galloway says it well, like he, he, he does this, looks like raising the roof, but you either need to push up prices or push down cost. Um, but depending on your business model, the objective within that goal, no matter which one you do, is to increase perceived value. People need to, to understand more value yeah. and perceive more value from yep. your brand than it currently exists in order to charge, again, either premium pricing and increase your margin that way, or to decrease, let's say, your cost of uh, your customer acquisition costs, your CAC. Um, in that sense, either one is a strategy, but either one requires increasing perceived value, hence why it's important to know what you're solving for, because this then becomes the strategy focus for your next nine to 18 months of brand building effort. Um, so I can summarize that really quick end goal, why an objective, um, really critical to setting goals. And then you have those objectives that you have under that goal, but yeah, anything, anything to add to that? Sorry. Yeah. And I, I guess what I would add to that is that, like the why is really important because if your why isn't strong enough, you're not going to stick to it. Like I think about the goal of picking your kid up from school. If you come across a roadblock, you're not going to go home. You're going to take another route and you're going to get your kid and you're going to bring your kid home. Yeah. Like there's, if things come in your way, like you're not going to, to stop pursuing your goal of bringing your yeah. child home. So like when you have a goal in your business or your organization or your, your life, like that why needs to be strong enough that if you hit a roadblock, if you hit a challenge that you under like you still are going to pursue it, but you might have to go a different way. Yeah. Um, and I even have gone through that an exercise of here's your goal and this is why it's important. And these are the three challenges you're going to have. And then of those three challenges, each of those challenges have three things that you're going to do to solve them. Mm -hmm. So that you always have a contingency plan so that it's not just a, Oh, I can't do this because my website won't do this or, Oh, I can't do this because we don't have the budget for it this year. Yeah. Like you find ways you make yeah. it happen um, because your why is strong enough. And I think sometimes people you know, you, you can impose a goal on an organization or you can impose a, impose a goal on a team. But if you miss out on imposing that why and like sharing yeah. that and building that passion, then that that goal isn't going to be important enough for them to like by hook or by crook, figure out a way to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. 
So going back to those three things you mentioned, so the end goal, why it's the goal and the objectives, how do brands identify what those things are? So the end, pe people tend to have really easy times with the end goal. Um, well, I'm sure no, anyone listening to this video that works in the space has probably heard some type of superior leadership. So like, okay, at the end of the year, we want to, you know, we want to increase uh, year over year growth by 80%, or we want to, you know, um, build this product or launch in this space or whatever it is, right? And those are goals to a certain extent, though I would argue they're almost more vision than they are goals. Mm -hmm. and, and there's yeah. some overlap there. We don't need to, you know, those are semantics at some point, but that's the easiest part. So what I like to do and, and what I've learned just through experience is I actually like to start there and start at like uh, the long term. So people hear themselves say that um, and then work backwards from there to realize, oh, that that's literally only the end goal, but we need to set objective goals before then to actually get us there. Because often it's like, hey, we want to reach that goal. We want to we want to hit this number. We want to hit this metric um, at the end of the year. Go figure it out. Whereas if you work backwards, so a question I usually start with is what would your business ideally look like three to five years from now? And then I let someone describe that and then ask, well, what about one year from now? Because they'll start to see the difference. If you just start with like, hey, what do you want your business to look like a year from now? They actually might start talking about what they aspirationally want it to look like long-term if they're not, you know, and some people understand the difference between those things, but I did, no matter what the timeline is, start longer. So you identify the mm -hmm. end goal and then work backwards and be like, well, I can't repeat that. So I actually have to, I, I have to think through the, the, the checkpoints or the other objectives that will lead up to that goal. I have to reverse mm -hmm. engineer and figure out, okay, what stands in the way between me and that goal? And what can we do in a shorter amount of time to work through that? Yeah. And even the opposite of that, like if you say, where do you, what do you want your business to be five years from now? And it's drastically different than where it is. Yeah. Well, then in one year, there needs to be some changes. It can't just be that we're scraping by. Like, I think sometimes, you know, you think, oh, we're in this for a year. If we can just get, get another year and just like this year, we're going to be fine. We're going to be okay. Well, that's not growing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just made. Yeah, absolutely. I think it sheds light. Like once you see like, oh, that's the end point. And then you realize the gap, like we talked about earlier, you realize the gap, mm -hmm. like, oh, we have to set some more specific goals, which we don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can use, you know, the smart acronym, whatever you want to use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's certainly goals until then. And then other questions I usually start with, you know, when I'm looking at like brand strategy, brand vision, and, and looking at setting goals beforehand, some of the key questions I'll usually ask are, like I said, what would your, what would your, you know, business model uh, look like in those timelines? Is your current model scalable to mm -hmm. that? So that's a great question. Is the, is if the answer is yes, like, Hey, our structure's right. We just need more awareness or we need more. Great. Then we can focus on activation, but there may be some things you need to change about your pricing model, or, mm -hmm. you know, you might need to go from sales led to a product led service, you know, whatever it might be. Um, because those are then going to become more specific goals before you can even think about that long-term goal. Mm -hmm. um, I, one of my favorite questions, if you could wave a magic wand and change one thing about your brand right now, what would it be? That. Um, I just like the mindset of it and I've gotten some really good answers from that. And, and I think people have thought through that really well. And then a bit more granular, if you're looking for granular questions could be, you know, what are your current revenue streams? Make sure you're observing that because those are things to, to leverage. You might have to add to those or you might have to even take away from those if you need to focus. What are your highest margin offerings? What are your top selling offerings based on volume? Um, there's a, there's probably a thousand questions you can look through from that perspective, but yeah, I would suggest some of those as starting points and thinking through those um, to, to make sure you're identifying like, okay, what is the end goal? What's the why? And then what are the objective goals that we have to hit in order to even move closer to that mm -hmm. direction realistically? But any, I, any ones that you would add, I know you're, you're awesome at that. So <laughs> I really, well, I really like the questions that you outlined because I think about some of those brands that have been super aspirational, like think about WeWork, or for example, which is old news, but like they were all about these big, amazing, huge goals, but they didn't have like the granular business model to back it up. And so it's really important to look, look at your organization and your brand through a super aspirational lens. Where do we want to be? But like, you can't just hope it into existence. Mm -hmm. You actually have to have like boots on the ground, things happening to, to actually like make it, make it attainable. So one of the things that I would encourage people to think through too, is like, what is the structure of your team and of your organization, not just in your product offerings and your services, but like, do you have the right people in place that are going to like stick with, stick with you and they're going to help you build it and that you can trust. Um, and so making sure that you have the team or, you know, a partner, if you want to pull in an agency or a business consultant to help do that, but you, for the most part, a person isn't going to be able to, you know, 
it can't be a leader alone. It's going to yeah. need to be the team and, and have the right people in place too. Certainly. Yeah. I would second that hundred percent. That's cool. Cool. Well, I want to go talk about goals now, Frank. Let's do it. We're going to do it <laughs> all the time. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing this. This is our, our third video in the series about building a brand. Yeah, that is. So cool. Awesome. Well, well thank we'll you for your time. Week. Appreciate it. Have a good one. You too. Bye.